Let's talk about using goals. Powerful tool. Using goals to develop stars. Not just average people, but how do you how do you develop stars? People are really going to make an impact. Let's talk about how you make that happen. Now, you need lots of possibilities. You can't, it puts too much pressure to get one or two people in right from the beginning, down the road after they kind of prove themselves. But you need lots of possibilities. You need to go get yourself, you know, not one or two people because you're just going to grind them to a pulp. Go ahead and get yourself 10 or 20 people you can work with, or as many as possible. And the thing is, you don't know what's going on in their mind. Let's just say they're all jumping up and down. I want to, I want to, I'm, I'm excited. You've never, nobody wants it bad of me. You think, you know, I'm going to go and get on my knees and pray to God because I found the opportunity that I've been looking for. You can count on me. I'll be the hardest. They all have all this stuff that yakking that comes out of their mouth. But you never know until you get them out there and get them going, right? Because they don't know and you don't know if they're going to be good at it. They can want to do it. They can be very sincere. They can look like it. But they can look like an Olympic gold medal basketball player, put them in the gym shorts and everything. But until you give them a basketball goal and get them out there and say, go, let's do a layup drill, you're going to start to eliminate themselves. So what you want to do is get yourself a bunch that could be good. They're in the ballpark. They got what it, they've got the uh, desire. They've got enough of the natural ability. It looks like so they could. They're they're in the ballpark. Then what you want to do is you want to give them something to do. You want to get them all focused in on a spot here. You want to get them starting here on a baby step type goal. You've got to give them something to do so they can do it. Faithful and little, faithful and much. If they can't even do with the simple stuff, so you make a big deal out of giving them something simple, all of them start at the same point. That way you can measure them against each other. And so you have little, little challenges laid out for the day, first day, first week, first month. Most of them will lead, you know, weed themselves out way before that. But like the first day, how flexible, how cooperative are they? How are they coachable? How are they flexible, willing to change your schedule to adapt? Until you start putting some challenges on them, you're not going to see. Now over here, they could be, I pay any price. I'll go climb any mountain to be successful. Then you go over here, well, come back this afternoon. Oh, I can't do that. I've got to go scratch my nose this afternoon and uh, take a nap. Oh, you know, my afternoon is booked. So as soon as you start giving them things to do, you start, and then you start to find out, but then you kind of ratchet up the things you want them to do. You keep it simple so they don't have the excuse, it's overwhelming, I didn't understand. And uh, you're just looking to see the early signs here. Now, they will weed themselves out. Now, it could be by the time you get to the first day, well, this guy's gone, this guy's gone, this guy's gone. Goodbye by the end of this week. You not only have lost them, you've lost them, and uh, you know, you're know you down with just a handful. And by the time you get to the end of the month, now you've got yourself, he's gone, he's gone, but you've got, let's just say, you've got some possibilities here. They've marched on through the checklist of things you've given to do. Now these guys are worth spending some time on. So now we go into phase two, and we give these people a little bit more challenging thing. But now what you're going to do is, you, once you get through the first stage, the entry level, basic, fundamental type, group, sort type goals, now you want to start individualizing things. That's the key. You want to give them individual targets. Because certain people are good at certain things, certain things are good at others, and you want to create an, envir an environment where they can, con see, they have excelled. They have separated themselves from the crowd. They've done well. 
And what you want to do is continue to encourage them by giving them achievable goals. Lots of achievable goals. Now, as the further they go, like, like in the next month, the further they go, like after the next month, you might put some targets up here, and by then, maybe, this guy, he just didn't make it. Now you're down to, say, two that are continuing to go. Now, if you're running an ongoing training factory, you brought in another group, a whole other group of rookies that are starting over, you know, the next month. And they're doing, you know, you got a whole other lineup of these, these kind of people in here, you know. They're the, the second wave. This is, this is January, this is February, this is the January wave here. They've moved on into the second month. You have your February group of greenies, rookies. They're showing up, jumping up and down, doing the same things. Uh, it's all the same <laughs> predictable stuff. I'll pay any price. Yeah, I heard that last month. Well, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is kind of keep that to yourself if you want, and let's just show me you'll pay any price. We got a way of finding that out. So you're putting them through the same kind of basic training. Then you have a little bit more challenging things you're doing from this group. And you can, when you get to the next month, the survivors that made it through that month, now they've got an even more customizable type thing because they've proving they can move through month one and two. And now these people right here. They could be, they've done these things, but they could be totally different in their skill sets. Some could be great one-on-one, -on -one, some could be great in front of a room, some could be great uh, uh, at products, some could be great at people. But what you want to do is get a situation where you're doing the coaching where you can, by individual goals and targets, keep them encouraged, lots of achievable goals, and give them where they can build their confidence by doing things. The greatest confidence is when you do things. You have that confidence that is born of achievement. That's what the great leaders do. They don't let them sit and say, that's what you did last, so we're going to do the same thing this month. No, you want to continue to challenge them because when you continue to challenge them, that's how you continue to unearth their next weakness that you want to train them in or the thing that they're, they don't know. Until you put a, a little more pressure on them, a little more challenge, you're not going to know that. And uh, they could have, their mind could be, have just misunderstood some stuff that you told them back in month one, month two, and operating off wrong assumptions, but the more you put they raise the challenges, the more those things that have come to surface and you can kind of get it, clear it up and explain it to them and get them where they can continue to move it. But here is, let me give you an example of how this idea works. Have you ever heard the thing of how you want to teach your three-year-old to dunk a basketball? What do you do? You go get the 10-foot basket, give him a basketball, and say, start dribbling, son? Uh, no. What you do is you get a little Nerf ball, a little Nerf get thing, and you put, put that thing on the ground, and you get him to wear a toy rim basket, and he's dunking. He's excited. He's all day long. He can do it. Look at me, Daddy. Look at me. Look at me, Mommy. I'm dunking the ball. Now, as they get older, then you get him a real one, and you lower it down. You get the adjustable rims, adjustable height, and you lower it down to maybe four or five feet tall. So where And give him a real basketball where it's a stretch. And then as he gets older, as he grows, and... Do kids grow the same rate? No. That's why it's customizable. That's why you keep it to where he's just got to continue or she's got to continue to stretch. And 
they're continuing to develop their muscles, their skills. It's a little bit hard. If it was easy, they'd get bored. You take a five-year-old playing with a Nerf ball, he could duck it, it's about waist high for him, and that's not going to be a big thrill. You want to keep it just a little bit out of the reach where it's challenging. You raise it five, six, and eventually it's going to go up to ten feet tall. Now somewhere along the way they may get where they just can't keep doing it, but as long as they can continue to improve, you keep stretching it on up. And eventually they're dunking the basketball, and here's the thing, their entire life, They've always been, in their mind, what's the, what's the big deal about that? Because they've always been able to dunk. It's not a big thing. Now, as opposed to me, when I started playing basketball, I'm in junior high and high school, school uh, I'm lucky to be able to touch, touch the net could shoot, but jumping, uh, that's something I should have started working on a, a lot earlier. But these kids who've been raised this way, they've always been able to dunk it. And I've heard the story of the, uh, the thing, you've ever heard the story of the, the young boy who got a calf when he was little, and he would carry the calf, you know, the little calf around. And then as the calf grew into a cow, the boy grew into a man, and for a long way, he's still able to lift the cow and carry it around. And why? Because he grew as the load grew. That's how you want to think of customizing these goals. This is how great coaches, what makes a great coach? A great coach develops by challenging with custom customize goals that keep their people moving, keep their students develop, and keep them building their confidence where gradually they say, they realize for themselves, not because somebody's coming up and telling them, but they develop that confidence that comes from achievement, which is the most, uh, I mean, the ultimate real confidence is that I can do this thing because I've done it. But they didn't have to get up to world record performance right in the beginning. They worked their way up to it. They were, a lot of times they weren't even aware where the top was. They were just continuing. They were focusing on their own improvement. That's how great coaches develop great performers, stars, one step at the time. And that's something you can do with the people you're working with who want to get better and want to do great things.